In this video, I'm going to teach you the easiest no-code scrollimation technique that you can start using right away in Framer without any coding knowledge. With this scrollimation technique, you can create animations like these in no time. My name is Nandi, this is Framer University, and let's get started. So I'm going to break this video up into four sections. The first section will be about the technique itself. So I'm just going to give you a quick run through of the technique. Then the second section will be about setting up a sticky frame. And the third section will be about scroll triggers. And the last section will be about scroll effects. So let's start with the first section, the technique itself. So if we take a look at this demo here in my browser, you can see that as I start scrolling down on this page, this little coin in the middle of the, uh, of the website is actually not scrolling. It stays in the middle of the viewport and it starts rotating around and doing all sorts of crazy stuff. And all the other things are just scrolling away. So that's basically the point of this technique. We are trying to have a sticky positioned frame in the middle of the viewport and we want to have it there as other contents are scrolling away on the website. And in fact, scroll triggers are also scrolling away and those trigger these scroll transforms that you can see here that this coin is actually rotating. So basically that's the technique. So now let's go into the second section of this video and let's take a look at how we can set up a sticky positioning in Framer. So if we jump into Framer, we will see this little project that I have here. It's really important that I will have a remix link in the description so you can just go ahead and remix this and take a look at it yourself. So I'm going to be playing around here in the tutorial page, but you can take a look at the homepage as well. I have the design optimized for mobile here. We're not going to talk about that in this video because I want to make it really short and concise so you can learn really quickly. But let's go back to the tutorial page and take a look at this setup here. So as you can see, I have a main section here and then we have a spacer section. It's nothing special. I just placed it there. So we have this black space on the top and we have also that on the bottom. And then we have a scroll animation container in the middle. So this basically houses this sticky frame, which contains this coin. Then we also have texts, as you can see, one is on the left, one is on the right. And then we also have these trigger frames, but we're gonna talk about those a little bit later. So if I start scrolling on this page right now, you'll see that everything scrolls away. But what I want to have is basically this coin staying in the middle of the viewport as I scroll down here. So basically what I need to do is I have to set this sticky frame to sticky positioning. As you can see, it is already sticky, but for some reason, if I preview this website, it's not sticky. It's not sticking to the top of the viewport as I scroll down. Because what sticky should be doing here is it should keep the sticky positioned frame at the top of the viewport until we reach the end of its parent container, which is this scroll animation container. And as you can see, it's really long. It ends here. So it should be sticky until we end that. So let's take a look at how sticky positioning works, because in fact, if we want this to work, we have to set all parent containers overflow to visible. So what is a parent container? Basically, a parent container is a container that wraps the sticky frame. So a scroll animation container is wrapping the sticky frame. So we have to set its overflow to visible. Another wrapping frame is the main, so we also have to set that to overflow visible. And the last wrapping frame is the desktop breakpoint itself, so that also needs to be overflow visible. So if we preview this now, you will see that our little coin is staying in the middle of the viewport. And as we reach the end of that container that I was talking about, it scrolls away. So now we have successfully set up this sticky positioning and we can move on to the third section of this video, scroll triggers. So basically the way we are moving this coin around as we scroll down on the page is by using these scroll triggers. 
As you can see, we have this trigger frames section here or container that has all these frames. As you can see, we have a bunch of these. These are all scroll triggers. So if I change the opacity to one here, you will see that these have colors so you can better understand what is happening here. So as you can see, if I start scrolling down, those don't have sticky positioning. So they are scrolling away with the text and everything. So only the coin is staying in the center of the viewport. And as you can see, these colored sections also scroll away, which are the scroll triggers. So basically what we do here is we create these and each of these frames have a scroll section. So as you can see, the first one has the scroll section, which basically matches the layer's name, the variant switch one has variant switch one scroll section. And basically I added these scroll sections to each of these trigger frames. So that's how we can later use them as triggers for different effects. So now we can move into the fourth section of this video and we can talk about scroll effects because as I said, we can use these scroll triggers to trigger different effects. I'm going to talk about two effects here, scroll transform and scroll variant. Let's start with scroll transform. So if I go into this little sticky frame, as you can see, we have this coin here. If I go into the right panel and check out the effects, you'll see that here we have scroll transform and we have scroll variant as well. But if I apply scroll transform, I have the option to select the trigger. Of course, we will use section in view as a trigger because that's why we created all those scroll sections. So section in view, and we will have a bottom of the viewport and the section will be this first section. So basically what we are saying is that when this section here enters the viewport from the bottom, so let me just scroll down real quick. So as you can see, as it starts entering the viewport here, you will see that we have this effect here going on. So basically as that container enters the viewport, we go from the from state to the to state. And we can also add the transition so it will be really smooth. So the from state here in this case, we saw previously that it was opacity 0 0.0 and scale 0, 0.0 as well. We are usually setting that to one because we don't really want to change anything on the from state. But then we can, you know, play around with the values here on the to state. So let's say I want to have a 3D rotation and I want to flip this little coin. So I'm going to have 90 here because we also have another section here and we can have the other 90 rotation on that one. So for now, what we have is basically this coin flips like this and then disappears. But then we are going to use this purple section to flip it more so we can actually see it. So let me go back to the coin and let me add another section here. So add section. So when the health turn second section comes in, we want to rotate another 90. So I'm going to just plus 90 here. And what this will do is you will see that it will make a full turn. And the reason why we have this in two is because then what I can have is another section between these two triggers, which is called variant switch. And now I'm going to talk about scroll variants, because as you can see, this coin is a component which has different variants. As you can see, each of these variants have different colors and different icons. So if I go onto this component and if I say that, hey, I want to have a scroll variant, which is triggered with a scroll section and that scroll section is a variant switch one and I want to switch to WAND. One. and I want to switch to wand, then what will happen is basically as this flips around, it also changes to a new coin. So it looks like this coin has a different image on the other side. So basically I can just add all the other scroll sections 
all the other scroll transforms and scroll variants for the other scroll triggers as well. So the coin keeps spinning and keeps changing variants. So as you can see, I'm finishing this up. I'm adding the last variant switch to celebrate. And now we can take a look at this. And as you can see, it is a rotating around, flipping and changing those nice variants. So it looks really cool. And the great thing about these trigger frames is we can just simply hide them by setting their opacity to zero. And now we still have all the different, you know, scroll transforms, but we don't see the triggers. So just to show another example for the variant switch, we have this background. It also has these different colored variants and we can also just switch these when we reach certain sections. So effect, scroll variant, and then section in view will be the trigger. Let's have variant switch one and then switch to green. When we have variant switch two, then we change to pink and then the last one will be cyan. So now we also have this background changing. So it's pretty nice. And what I want to tell you here is that you can use this in all sorts of creative ways. So if you want to have more elements here, not just one coin, maybe more coins, and then move them around in you know different directions, you can definitely do that. So for example, here we have this website it's haptic.app. So if you take a look at this section, this is basically made with the same technique and it is also made in Framer. So you can definitely create really creative animations with this technique. So just to recap what we learned today, we learned about the easiest scroll animation technique that you can use without any coding knowledge in Framer. We talked about sticky positioning and how it works. Then we talked about scroll triggers and how we can create these hidden scroll sections on our website to trigger different animations. And then we also talked about scroll effects, more specifically about scroll transform and scroll variants and how we can combine those with scroll sections to animate the elements within our sticky positioned frame. So I really do hope that you learned something from this video. If you wanna learn more about Framer, go to framer.university because I have a bunch of more free resources and tutorials just like this. So it is probably gonna be your best friend when learning Framer. Make sure to like this video, subscribe for more, and I'm gonna see you in the next one.